So, an interesting little fact. I don't know how interesting this is, but for the entire year of 2020, I thought I was 33 years old. Turns out I wasn't. I was 32, and today I'm turning 33. Yo, yo, yo guys, what is going on? Alex Pandrea here. Welcome back to another tutorial on card magic. In this video, we are gonna talk about the spread pass. The spread pass is one of my favorite passes to do. It's the one I've done probably most often. It's the first pass that I've ever learned. And I realized that a lot of people are not performing this pass in the correct way, at least adding a few subtleties to make it look as best as possible. So in today's video, we're gonna show you the spread pass and we're going to teach you how to do it. All right, before we get started with the tutorial, if you love passes, you're going to love the ultimate guide to the pass. It's seven of my passes in detail. Link is down below where you can pick it up. We are doing a special deal on this video download from now until next week as my birthday special. So click the link below if you want to learn some passes. I go into great detail on teaching you a variety of passes, how to use them, and all the nuances to making them the best and most invisible pass that you can perform. Plus there are some bonuses in there, so I think you're really gonna like it. All right, so what is a spread pass? Well, a spread pass is a type of pass. And what is a pass? Well, a pass is just secretly cutting the deck without the spectator noticing, using it as a control. So whether you're taking the top packet and secretly moving it to the bottom, or taking the bottom packet and secretly moving to the top, these are different types of passes, secret cuts of the deck, okay? Now again, there's many different versions, and this one is called a spread pass because we're using the spread to cover the action of cutting the deck. Okay, so it's sort of in slow motion and face up. You are placing the card into the middle of the deck, but then secretly moving it to the top by cutting the deck secretly. All right, now again, different types of passes include the classic pass, and the classic pass is moving the top packet to the bottom, just like that. I do have a tutorial on that, so you could click here to watch. But there's also the Herman style passes, and the Herman style passes bring the bottom to the top. Of course, there are many, many versions of these kind of passes and different ways to do them. So I have a full tutorial, link is down below on seven passes called the ultimate guide to the pass. Now the spread pass itself is a Herman style pass where you're secretly moving this bottom packet to the top while covering it with the spread and this is moving from here all the way up to the top, all right? And you're using the spread as cover, you're also using your right hand as cover uh, as you're squaring up the deck and we'll show you a few ways to get in and out of that as well. But just as an exposed view, the selected card is placed back just like that. You are taking the spread, you are placing it back on top. The spread is covering the motion of this moving from the bottom to the top and now this motion is covered by the right hand as you're squaring up the deck. All right, now let's take a look at it step by step. You're spreading about half the cards into the right hand like this, and you're having the card placed back after it's selected. So, all right, place your card back, boom, you placed it back, boom, right there, all right? Now you're going to come in with the right hand above the left hand packet. Now the way that you're going to place this back on top is very important, and we're gonna take a look at the different ways to do so in just a second, but for just the, the straight method, is placing this on top to square up, and as you're squaring up, watch what happens with the right hand. You're holding it just like this, and you're placing it on the left hand packet, and your right hand is opening up. Okay, so you're not just putting it here and then letting go with the right hand. Your right hand is opening up your fingers like this, and they're becoming straight. And then from there you have nice cover. Notice how the fingers just come out, and you're gonna have a nice cover just like this. All right, so if we turn this way, you can see that the whole bottom side is, is uh, blocked with the right hand, and what is happening underneath cannot be seen. So that's the first point that I want you to keep in mind when doing the right hand action. You see, as you square up, boom, the right hand opens up. Now what happens with the left hand and the left first finger? The left first finger, as this squares up like this, the right hand opens up, but now the left finger goes underneath just like that. If you are familiar with other kind of passes, this also might be of use. The first finger just comes in and kicks this out like this. All right, from here to here, 
kick out. All right? Now one thing that's important when you do any sort of kind of these passes, you don't want this left finger to spaz out like that. All right? This happens sometimes just in the natural action of doing this, you see? So keep that thumb along the side the whole time and it does help because you want to grab these cards with the left thumb as well. So that's going to help uh, your fingers from not coming out. Just something to keep in mind. Your first finger comes underneath just like that and at the same time as this spreads, you are going to open your hand and start kicking out this packet underneath like this. And you're kicking it out, out, out. You're keeping these fingers here so it doesn't you know flop over but also your right hand is for cover with the the right hand packet still against the right palm and you're kicking this out into the left hand all right the easiest way to think of it is that let's say you want to palm off this whole packet into the right hand all right that's sort of how i think about it and especially how I learned it. I want to palm off this into the right hand so I'm pushing it into the right hand as if I were palming it off. Of course we're not palming it off but I guess we sort of are because we're going to sort of get into this position and then place this packet on top all right if you want to think of it that way. So here right hand kicks out first finger starts kicking out 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 into the right hand until it until it goes and it touches the right hand all right. As soon as this happens, what will happen is that the packets come apart. And once the packets come apart, now they have switched places. All right, now the left hand packet, which was the top one, is now the bottom one. And now the right hand packet, which is against the right hand, was the bottom one, is now the top one. All right, now all there is left to do is square up everything. So place your right hand on top of the deck palm down and square everything up. Of course there's a little bit more to it because if you were just to do this and that it doesn't seem very convincing and this seems like a very suspicious action. So we want, don't want to do that. We want to come up with ways around that. So I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Now you're gonna get maybe stuck at this point. All right. Just keep in mind that you want to also try to pull this packet a little bit with the left thumb to kick it and get it past this point. This point is probably the hardest, right? Because you don't want to get cards stuck at this point. All right. Another thing to keep in mind. So now let's talk about a little bit of the ways to cover the action more. Because if you're just going to do that, uh, then you're going to obviously flash over here. They're going to see this happen. If you're just going to place this on top like this, you might get a flash of that. If you're going to place your hand too much on top of here, it might look suspicious. So how do we wrap this all around in a performable uh, aspect and get that pass looking really nice and get that pass looking like you're just placing the cards here, squaring up, and you've done the move, all right? So the way that I do it is in two, two steps. The first step is I never liked that, you know, I would film myself, I would look at myself in the mirror, I never liked the fact that I would always flash here, all right? This would flash all the time, and if it flashes, you know, in the mirror, on video, chances are, uh, to the spectator, they might flash, right? So, what we want to do to combat this is two things. One, tilt your hand down a little bit. So instead of just being at sort of eye level here and you get the card back, you want to tilt down as you square up. So you're coming down. The second thing that you can do is kick the packet in the left hand back a little bit. So instead of just being in a regular dealer's grip, you kick it back a little bit and that will help with disguising the action because now it's a little bit further back and the chances are that it's going to flash is a little bit less because these cards are covering the top end over here. All right. Now one thing to keep in mind, when you square up, you don't want to square up very nice and tight. All right. You want to square up a little bit messy. All right. So I kick back just a little bit. Boom. I tilt down just a little bit and now I'm squaring up. Look, a little bit messy. This is great because you're going to get cover. All right. You're going to get cover from the mess and then you're going to have a reason to square up at the end. So you're going to cover. Boom. Now also notice when I'm tilting down, I'm also using my right fingers to cover this as much as possible. All right. So not only is this 
out like this, but if you do need so, just curl it in a little bit, and you see, look, that's going to cover, not covered, covered, not covered, covered. You want to cover this action so that that is not seen, all right? Then from here, kick out, use the pressure with the left thumb to kick this in, and once you see it cleared, watch what I'm going to do with the right hand. Instead of coming and just placing it on top, I'm going to move my right hand forward, all right? Move my right hand forward, square up so that this covers any action that the two packets are coming together, hand forward just a little bit, and then I'm going to use my right hand to come back and square everything up. Maybe I do one of these, maybe I square up then with both hands, maybe I pick up the deck with the right hand, but that's to cover afterwards, okay? So putting it all together, it's here, kick it back a little bit, tilt down, square up a little bit messy, keep your fingers out, but then curled in if you want to cover it, push, 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 all the way into the right hand, Keep the pressure with the left, clear. Now I'm going to move forward with the right hand. And another little tip is if you want to move everything up. So and now because we've come down so much, right? You want to move everything back up to an eye level. Move forward with the right hand a little bit. Grab the cards, square up, pick up the deck, place it on the table, place it in the spectator's hands. And you've done a very nice control, okay? Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind is the angle. So if I'm facing forward and straight onto the spectator, you're going to need a little bit more cover because there's more action here, okay? Obviously, the more you turn to this side, the more cover you're going to need because of this part of, of the hand being, you know, flashing. So this is why you might need more of an upward gesture at the end. The more you turn to this side, the more invisible it is because of your body, okay? And you know, I see a lot of people do something like this, come here and then square up on their leg, that's stupid, don't do that. Uh, I see a lot of people come here and then turn when they're doing it and then come here. Don't do all of these weird, um, over-the-top actions in a slight that should be just squaring up the deck, okay? Think of what the natural action is and try to mimic it. So if you want a little bit of body motion and if you want to come this way a little bit while you're performing, well then do it in a natural action. So you're taking the spectator's card, you're placing it back here, and maybe you're asking the person on your left side a question. And as you're asking them a question, you tilt in, you move in this way, you ask them something, and you do the pass that way, all right? Um, so, at, you know, at all times, just keep in mind where you are, right? How you can create also an offbeat so that you're here, you wait, and then as you're talking, as you're talking, oh, you ask this person a question, as you ask them a question, you come here, you do the move, all right? So create these moments for you to benefit from when performing any type of move, all right? And I think you'll have a much more success rate in the confidence you have in performing these secret passes. So there you go. Question of the day today is what is your favorite pass? Go ahead, leave your comments below. What is your favorite pass to perform and why? Let's have a discussion in the comments instead of just putting down in the comments random comments. Let's actually have a discussion because the more you put time and effort into your comments and to show me that your, fee you know, your feedback definitely means something to me. So when I do see detailed comments like that, be sure that I will respond. I'll try to get to everybody. So do leave your feedback below. What's your favorite pass? Why do you like to perform it? What's your least favorite pass? Why you hate that particular pass? Let's get a conversation going and have a little bit of fun in the comments. Guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like, hit the bell, hit the comment, hit the share, hit the do all the stuff that you need to do. I do my best to put on this platform a high quality learning experience. You can obviously support me with the links below with my websites, but if you cannot do that, a simple comment, a like, a share, that would mean the world to me as well. I hope everybody has a great day and we will see you very shortly on the next video. Peace.